But first, blue skies, and I'm happy to share. Welcome, let's have a walk around the patio if you're so inclined to join me. There's a lot going on, there's a lot not going on, but the orchids are outside. And I have not walked around the patio with you for quite some time. So welcome, let's have a look, see what's going on. We are on the east side and the first showstopper here is my Dendrobium berry Oda in beautiful sunshine opening up approximately 32 spikes that I could see and she's also growing four keikis <laughs> matured four keikis beautiful beautiful floral freesia kind of honey sweet fragrance probably washed out by the sun on the camera but beautiful colors love the watercolor effect in the petals and sepals that it has amazing but here's the thing in the back here i have my fires in perma shade for the time being because it's either too hot in the sun and too dry or it's too cold or too windy you know you name it i found a spot at least here where she looks to be okay we're getting spotting on the leaves and that is normal in my climate i cannot keep fires leaves clean but she's growing one spike Unfortunately, only one spike, but hey, she has been developing and maturing seed pods that are up there, which I will be cutting off shortly. But having said that, this growth, the second one that I have, did not produce a spike this year. And I think it's a bit late, even when I remove the seed pods for her to grow a spike. But anyway, We'll have to wait and see if the Vaseline needs to come back so that I can protect the spike from ants. Huh. Time will tell. My Cymbidium right next to her as well is growing three spikes. That is one less than last year. We will take what we get. Conditions here might not be too ideal for her. She hasn't been repotted in donkey's years either. So that's probably why there's lesser spikes this time around even though the growth with a missing spike is looking just fine. So I don't understand. Oh well, we'll take three spikes in the blooms that she gives us. But we can move along to Tulumnia Avenue. Sorry for the glare of the sun. I'll do a separate video on my Tulumnias and how they are faring because, yeah, some of them not so good. We may need to say bye-byes and some are doing just fine. Coping, let's just say, just coping. Ah, the showstopper here on the south side of the hedge is my Colmenara Masai Red. Five spikes, also one spike less than last year. However, she is due for a repot later this year, and I am seeing that a bud blasted. How come? And just that one. But I love the structures of Colmenara Masai Red spikes. And her first bloom has opened and she is perfect. It's very, very rare that I can see my Masai Reds so beautifully perfect and clean because the velvety texture of the lip always attracts dust. Then enter the wind, the Polinia is super sensitive, so that blows off. What I would love to see is all the blooms of a Colmenara Masai Red on a single spike, all the white polinia intact. It just looks spectacular to have that whole row with the dots. But every other spike is looking pretty, pretty standard the way it should be. Impressive spikes, impressive buds, and the color. Oh, just gorgeous. So as we move down, not an orchid, but my silver bush has died, succumbed to some black soot. Even though I treated it, it didn't like the treatment that I used, so this one's going to be emptied out soon. My spider mite magnet, these have self-seeded, these palm trees. They just grew in their pots and I thought I'd leave them. And yeah, this was spider mite territory for... 2022 i cut the most damaged leaves off have treated it but it was 
Surprise, surprise. Can you believe it? You can see some of the spider mite damage over there. Didn't like that one bit. And I am on an open mic, so the noise influence may be a little bit more radical today, unfortunately, but that's the way we're gonna do it. At least I can work with my gimbal and have my hands free. We're also very much more flexible this way. Cousin It without his shades on, this is what he looks like. Still doing beautifully here. I have a little bit of cold damage on some of the newer growths right here. So that's not so good. I'm going to put him in sunshine because I've never had cold damage before while he was in sun. I wanted to enjoy some beautiful green foliage though and that's why I had him in perma shade over here. You can see that that's not ideal. They need a little bit of sun to warm up. If their temperatures are going to drop low at night, they do need some kind of a warmth to compensate and make up for that. Beautiful hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blooms that are not fragrant, but just magnificent at this point in time. I do go out and pick out some of the spent blooms on occasions, but at the moment he is just flushing out all the blooms like crazy. Here is my workstation, Primp and Preen station. And here is Stan the man, looking marvelous. Has matured all of the growths, 13 in total. The older leaves are now dying back. Normal, I'm just waiting every day. If I can't pop them off with a gentle tug, then they stay on. This one's not coming off yet either. So these guys are dying back. And here's my hot Sonia, my little Tulumnia. She's doing great, absolutely great. I know it doesn't look the part, but she has increased in size and growths and fans. Hmm, probably I would say 50% more than when I got her last year. And this experiment is working really well because my variegata unfortunately died because I got that completely wrong. Stan the man is lifting himself out of his basket as you can see and also check out this pseudobulb of course it has to go by the grating and here we have a squished pseudobulb but i'm not cutting the basket back just gorgeous we'll see how long this fern lasts for the time being it can stay sorry if the moped in the background can't be edited out looking awesome i'm not concerned about pseudobulbs being buried just yet I haven't seen any decay or stress on the leaves by not seeing the pseudobulbs, so I'm watching it though. If need be, I would have to pick out all the moss. However, that would destroy roots as well that have grown in that moss and are accustomed to that very, very humid and damp environment. Gorgeous. He's such fun to grow. Oh, next to him, here's the little sweet sugar. Got a bit of botrytis on the second spike, unfortunately, but you know what? That comes with the territory, but already growing a new growth, which is progressing beautifully. I bring sweet sugar inside now. I've had this orchid outside when temperatures were 12 degrees. As we are going into single digits in Celsius now, that is not going to be a good thing. Now this orchid comes inside, but it's been pretty, pretty temperature tolerant. It's been amazing. You guys, I'm going to show you what is to the right of my foot. For real? Huh? <laughs> oh, he does this all the time. This is King. If you're new to my channel, King is a harlequin puppy. Uh, not much puppy anymore, but he's, he's now two years. I got him in 2020. And this is what happens when I walk around and stay standing. King will lie down at my side and then I have to watch my footing. So we've got some Brassavolas. This could be Perinii. This could be anything. It could be a Flagellaris, but it is a rescue and it has bounced back fabulously. They hang out here on my, what used to be my Vandorac, seeing as all my big Vandas have died. This is the Flagellaris has bloomed for me beautifully, has been working on a new growth, but of course that takes quite some time when the temperatures are too low. But it is doing well as well. I have to bring these inside every night now. 
Here's Rainbow Forest looking a little bit scrawny, but even the fan back here that I've been peeling the leaves off of because I don't want any rot to set in, that is growing a new root. So it's still okay, even though it doesn't really look that nice at the moment. I think that the lower fans are going to be taking over, making the impact of the pot. Here's my little weirdo, my Neostylus Lucneri Blue with its increasingly funky blooms. This is the spike, first spike of a fan that has grown in the last three years. Yeah, I think we have more bluebells than we have blooms. <laughs> yeah, they're not supposed to look like this. Here we have another spike on a fan that grew in the last three years. Its first spike also twisted and deformed. Oh, but as I'm standing here, the fragrance is incredible. Just incredible. So my little weirdo, my little ugly duckling just stays with me because how can you resist growth like this? Just insane. It's an insane orchid, but it also grows insanely. So she's a keeper. My standard Lucneri right here, also just holding on, gets morning sun for about four hours when I bring her outside. Biding her time in the basket and waiting for warmer temperatures. <laughs> that would be me included. However, that is not going to happen anytime soon. We're still in January. This fan is progressing nicely. And there's a beautiful fan in the background right here. In the back, not the background. A resident spider has made its home in there. Holding on, doing better because I'm more vigilant now about bringing her inside. This is all cold damage from previous year. I think 2021, I was more radical, thinking that the neo parent in it would tolerate more cold temperatures, but I was mistaken and I was schooled. So that's all from 21. But now we are being a little bit more cautious and you can see how the growth is still holding on with the adverse conditions. Good news down here though. My no ID, nobly. Look at those nubbins, how they're progressing. I think that's awesome. They all slow down. They will slow down because it's just going to be too cold next week. And it's not just for one night, it's like a full week. I come around and just make sure if I can pop up a leaf, that's what I do. If they don't come off easily, like with Stan the Man, then they stay on. But I've got some gorgeous nubbins coming in many, many places on all the canes that grew last year. It's going to be pretty and beautifully fragrant. And then the other day, I've always been hovering around these because I have to spray the baskets above them. And I all of a sudden saw Cooksonianum also with nubbins. I was not expecting that. I was somewhat concerned that I hadn't got the culture right. I thought maybe she would then also bloom much later for me because the nubbins from the regular, the standard the complex hybrid nobili, they came relatively quickly, prematurely, mind you, but yeah. So I was always looking at my Cooksonianum but I was always focusing on these canes that grew during the season of 2022. And then one day I looked down and lo and behold, <laughs> I'm so happy to see this. Ananda Nathimento orchids and succulents, check this out. In my care, very, very happy. Let's check and see if we can get rid of this leaf. Nope. The Dendrobium berry odor keikis that we potted up in semi-hydro with just lava rock are in spike. Look at that. So that's awesome. Little pot there ready to go. My little King Gyanum, also from Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents. Hi, doing really well. These were little keikis when I got them. Daisy chained them all together. It's all the wiring you see. It's one little semi-circle daisy chain of keikis. And look at the growth. At least this one is nice and large. You can see the fresh green leaves right here. So they're doing well and they are fully rooted in. Pretty much I could take out the wire, but that's just going to be too cumbersome. And this is what's going on at my feet. <laughs> All the time, every time. <laughs> oh dear, let me see if I can get up. 
I recently did a video on my Holcoglossum Kimberlianum, and I can link that in the description if you're interested. No blooms, no spike, but she literally disappears against the backdrop of the hedge. Beautiful growth, very vigorous grower, still not getting the blooming part right. Here is Maxillaria tenuifolia, also looking fabulous and also not in direct sun like I used to do last year. She used to live as a centerpiece on the table on the east side, but I wanted to see some green foliage. I don't know if that is going to have me forfeit blooms later on here in this year of 2023, but I wanted to see some beautiful green foliage. Normally, because I give them so much light, the leaves go the very pale green, leaning towards yellow, but doing beautifully. She gets maybe three hours of sun, the morning sun, straight away. I love seeing the new growths look so amazing. Yes. I still got rainwater in there. This is my plain water that warms up nicely in the mornings as I need it. Asleep is my Neo Phoenicia falcata. My Vanda Leopard Yawn is probably history. It's not progressing at all. Despite permanently in water, it's not doing anything. I think it is history. And here's my Cerula looking very gnarly, not appreciating the conditions, but it's alive. The growing point is looking so, so much better. At least this setup has saved it. The semi-hydro setup, not saying it's happy, but it has saved it. And up here I have my green light, also only holding on. My Renantanda Sunrise, just holding on, not exactly something to write home about. Completely wrong conditions for this orchid, so it's never been really happy with me, unfortunately. And you can see here I've stripped the leaves off again as well, because I don't want the cold and the humidity to cause any rot. Well, let me just say in my climate, she needs a much, much hotter and much, much more humidity. I can't provide any of those. So we'll move on to the ones that are doing really well. And that is my Citrina, she's holding on. We've got a little bit of cold damage right here. A bit of anthocyanin showing in areas. If that were sun, then I would need to see that here as well seeing as the two get the same kind of light exposure, but it's not, but you can see that it's cold damage because the anthocyanin on the new growth is already pretty predominant. Gotta really hold on until things warm up a bit more. Now, usually in this pocket, I've got about 22, 21 degrees, but the night temperatures are what really is stressful. My Ampuyathea Pink Dreamer is doing okay still growing nicely from the center. I've had her out in more colder temperatures this time around because she can take it, but now I'm a little bit wary. Don't want to stress her too much. She comes inside. <clears throat> Moving right along here is my Schweinfortianum. Now you see it in shade, but in the mornings it's got full sunshine for the longest time about four to five hours of sunshine in this back corner. And then I make sure that it has a little bit more of a respite because if we don't have a breeze going, I don't want it to get like, you know, burnt. Still figuring this orchid out. She's been with me now two years. She grows well, she stays outside and I love her for the detail on the stems. Look at that detail. And she has a sandpaper texture as well. Quite interesting. So she has a ways to go. She's all the way up here. But she stays outside as well. And on the top, I've got my Ancelia Africanas enjoying full sun from the moment they come outside. That's about six to seven hours, depending how much of sun we've got. I've got the Thompsoniana up here. And that would be Myrmecophila Thompsoniana. It's progressing with its new growth, surprisingly enough, seeing as, <laughs> again, temperatures, progressing with a beautiful new growth. And this growth started just during the season that I was bringing the orchids inside for the night. And then, you know, peeking out over the bowl there is my Mimicophila tibicinus. Holding on, just holding on. Everybody's waiting for warmer temperatures. 
And then recently in a Blooms for You video, I featured my child Priya, who can, now I can take this bloom off. Still blooming, this is about two months now. You can see the blooms are getting tired, but what a feature to have this time of year. And then the Papuilu Anantha is right in the back, starting a new growth. The biggest growth spurt I've ever had out of this orchid was in 2022. Surprised me, completely surprised me. She's got so many aerial roots, I could actually cap her off and maybe just pin her into the hedge and let her grow another little side shoot from this main stem. Still have to water these orchids. You can see all the roots of the Chao Praia. I'm training them just to bring them a little further away from that hedge. I want to get them long enough so I can get them into a kind of a bucket and make them, you know, water roots like these guys down here. Sorry about that water. I very rarely change that water out so it's got everything in it that nature throws at it, be it rainwater or O water. And then, of course, algae, because sometimes I do put CalMag in there and some sometimes fertilizer, not much. I mainly just take care of this orchid by spraying her. Look at these growths <laughs> from the main stem where she cracked. Too beautiful. We'll move the camera around so we avoid the glare of the sun. Maybe, maybe later this year we will get ourselves a beautiful blooming out of the two new growths. Maybe I need to stop fertilizing this orchid as much as well. Let me just point the camera down to avoid the sun. Oh, and let me check, show you Garen Weaver right here. Ragmapedium Garen Weaver, holding on because mama doesn't know what else to do with it. Can't come inside, no space. And yeah, I know this sounds terrible because it's a beautiful orchid. Take some of the leaves off. It's a beautiful orchid, but I have to make cuts somewhere. She's just holding on. She'll never be one of those really pretty orchids in my climate, but she's holding on and that's the most important thing. And then we'll see. We'll see how she progresses. So let me just get that leaf out. There we go. And let's go to the blooming alley. I'm not trying to hide anything from you. I'm just avoiding the glare of the sun. Okie dokie. Let's turn you this way. I've got my little stepping stool ready here and let's have a look see what's on the top shelf real quickly if you're so inclined if you're enjoying this little tour give this video a like I appreciate that Siliana will agree in the background so that we have the Bretonia Shiloh token also from Fernanda Nascimento orchids and succulents and I hope that you can see a new growth starting and then we have Murasaki Komachi right here Holding on, also growing a new growth, but holding on. Let's just say she could perform better if I would get my act together and do it right by her. I mean, she gets fertilizer and everything, so I don't understand what she's objecting to, to be honest. You know, I got this from Insta Orchids and ADD. And check out all the new growths. Three more new growths coming. So we matured. Two new growths last year in 2022 and now she's already during the most adverse conditions growing three new growths not complaining very grateful and here we have the Oncostella wildcat just opening her first two blooms with two spikes which is fabulous so happy because I did not do right by this orchid after I rescued her and then <laughs> I kind of forgot how much water she wants. Let me just scoot you back. And well, now we have two spikes. It's the first time that I've got two spikes on the two leads. That's amazing. And yes, she's still facing the other way because I would like the blooms to all open up in the same direction. So I know I still can't see them. <laughs> the ones in the back there is a Zygopetalum, also growing a new growth. And then I have my Krista Erdmann, excuse you, leaf, right there, just holding on, taking its time to do anything. It's probably in a rest mode, not that I force a rest on it, but it's just the way this orchid is. It does nothing for the longest time, then grows a spike, and then suddenly just bursts into active growth with new growths, and then again, nothing. 
And then here we have Tunya Good Life number one enjoying some sunshine. You can see how the leaves are curling because of the cold. Coilostylus ciliaris has matured the two growths that started late in the season. Thank goodness they didn't stall. We have a good size compared to the previous size. So the two new leads are fine. My Lelia amethyst. This new growth is what I'm looking at. Not that this one will bloom because it's not growing during the right season for my climate. Of course, it's doing the right thing by the orchid, but yeah, we got to be careful. But you can see at least the progress is pretty similar to the one before. So we just don't want to lose the growing point here. That's the one thing I'm concerned about. My golden peacock is finished blooming, doing fine, making sure that no scale gets at it. It get, keeps getting treated every week, every two weeks. Just to make sure that, like last year, I didn't suddenly get a surprise you know, that was dead. And here's Skinnery, Lottie Jessie I crossed with Skinnery. The sheaths are empty still. But still, we have sheaths compared to all the previous years where we were waiting. This is a step in the right direction. And I got this one from the Orchid Room back in 2020. Very happy to see this orchid doing so, so well. There is an assortment of orchids here that are just, you know, holding on desperately for dear life. Again, Velotina, struggling with the cold. My Kyoguchi Happy Field, struggling with the cold, which is a shame. It didn't used to before, but the curling of the leaves, the blotches underneath, that's not normal. That's not happened. Also on a new growth, so very much struggling with the cold. Don't know if I'm even going to get a blooming out of her because she's clearly objecting to what's happened. Magic wand, same situation. Curled leaves. I'm sorry if I keep repeating myself. But here's Patricia van Buyenbroek also. You know, older growth of a dendrobium. Not happy. Not happy at all. But the cane that I snapped off is still nice. It is juicy. It is not desiccated in any way. Here's my little pocket lover. She is in bloom. Let me move everything out of the way. Gorgeous, gorgeous blooms. Very grateful that they bloomed out, considering that I was moving her in and out, even though she was in bud. I was thinking the orchid needs light. That is the most important thing. And if she blasts her buds, then c'est la vie. The orchid needs light and she's blooming out. It is absolutely wonderful. Very, very pleased with my Lobata in the back corner here. Fantastic. Beautiful new growth is just progressing and progressing. And I hope that the coming conditions are not going to stop or stall that progress. <sighs> and on the bottom shelf, we have some bird poop on leaves. This is my Maxima. So this growth matured during the fall as well. I'm very happy that it did mature. It has a sheath. It may be blind. It may stay blind. But whatever is happening at the base, that is the most important thing. Make sure that the roots have a chance to come out. All my purpuratas, all the growths that are there have sheaths. Even though they are not mature yet, they may also end up being a bit stunted because what's going to happen next week is all going to influence the progress. And then here's another sheath, another purpurata, gorgeous, gorgeous sheath. And here's my Verkhoiseri, beautiful sheath as well. So at least they're doing well. Sorry if I can't edit out the background noise. And then here's my Prostechia lancifolia, Cochleata variety lancifolia, holding on, growing roots, new eyes are swelling, bring it on. She had a massive root cleanup in 2022 as well. And then here is my pastoral innocence. She's a mystery. She's a mystery, just like my mailman is. And here I have two Phalaenopsis, the only two that I keep schlepping out now when it's warm enough. That's insolence in the back. I need the light for her to be able to produce some energy so that maybe she will grow us a keiki. That is the plan. And here is Romeo's nube in the front. Same thing, not because I'm waiting for a keiki, but because the more light I give this orchid, I can also help her along to start growing some roots because 
you know, I would love to repot her sooner rather than later into Lekka and self-watering. On another day, we'll do another little tour of Rapiculus Lelius. There's some action there. But here, my Prismartocarpa, my Panarica Prismartocarpa, I want to say that the sheath is actually getting chubby in the middle, but that would be far too soon. Still, I don't care. It's growing beautifully. I bring it out every single day in this corner where it has sunshine and bright light throughout the day just to <laughs> keep it warm because we're seeing stress. We are seeing stress when the leaves go funny and a little bit wrinkly like that. Not good. But also in the background there is my brassavole also growing a new growth, which I think is astounding this time of year but you do you boo and i'm just here to make sure you're going to be okay its sheath of course is still empty because it's not tis not the season tis not the season up here i've got dendrobium tortile and here i've got dendrobium aurantiflameum from michael mccarthy back in the day melissa walker and the orchid room we got through the spider mic issues michael but i don't have any new growth coming from the pot Hardly surprised. And here's my Luisendorf doing well. That pseudobulb that we cut the rot out of is desiccating. But all these new growths at the time, you can see they've progressed based on what they had to deal with. They've progressed very, very well. She is rooted well into the pot. And the other bit of rot that we dealt with, where we just pierced holes into the black spot and poured cinnamon in, yeah, that dried up nicely. So I'm not expecting any blooms or miracles out of this one just yet, but this is super promising and I'm happy with that. Now, up here is Victoria Regina starting to bloom out. The new growths are progressing. She is in her happy place. You can see the new growth there. She's in her happy place. This is just ideal for her. Lots of light and cool temperatures. She's living la vida. And here I've got my polyanthum. You see how long it takes this one to drop its leaves. But it will happen one day very, very quickly. I've been taking off little bit leaves here and there, but it's not as quickly as, let's say, its neighbor, Bensonier. Completely, completely exposed now. <laughs> Waiting for blooms, as I am also from the unicum here. My one cane of last year, hopefully in 2023 now, we can get some more substantial growth going. This one is a little firecracker. This is my Hawaiara Lava Burst that was dead to rights when I mounted it on the scrubby pad. And it has turned out that it is blooming for us in the two years since it's been on the scrubby pad. She was a rescue of the highest order. <laughs> My Exili is growing beautifully as well. I know it doesn't look like much of an orchid, but her growth habit is insane. It's different. It's quirky. It's all over the place. My Popcorn Haruri is holding on <clears throat> for dear life. So there's not much to update here compared to what we were talking about in a Blooms for You. Here we can see the new growth is progressing. This one that I was concerned about is still progressing. So yeah, dear life, fingers crossed, because it's going to get nasty for this orchid in the coming week. And down here, we can do a little bit of a cruise around my community mount of Dendrobium soraula, growing a new growth right there. Only, only recently did I pick off the last of the blooms. It has been blooming for seven months, if not eight. Here we have Ceratolabium, also called Sharky, and I couldn't believe it, but I was seeing buds. And then it's like, are you kidding me? It's too cold. And here are the sticks of my Aphilum. <laughs> this is what she looks like. Not much to write home about. Not a pretty orchid when dormant, but yeah, I'm already snooping. Hopefully I'm looking for nubbins. It's way too soon. It's way too soon to even think about nubbins, but you know what? <laughs> Can't help ourselves here. Can you come off very gently? Nope. And that would be like the last, yep, just fell off. That would be the last leaf of the canes that have defoliated completely. 
and of course my nursery up here of canes as well. We're going to get some blooms up there. Still looking a little bit scraggly and scruffy. I've got high hopes for the coming season. And we're back to where we started. Some beautiful blooms finishing off the little tour. Well, it was a long tour, but I tried to keep it as concise as possible. We'll finish off with berry odor. I'll start to remove some of Baloo's hair that gets stuck everywhere. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Thank you so, so much for your company. If you have any questions about any of these orchids here, let me know in the comments. If you want to see anything a little bit closer, also let me know in the comments. I'll be so happy to oblige because when I talk orchids, time flies. When I talk with you, time flies. You're so appreciated and I hope that you're having a fabulous day, but I do attach a condition on that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.